Knowledge, beauty, and results. That's what you can expect at Sweatnam Cosmetic Surgery. This segment is sponsored by Sweatnam Cosmetic Surgery, and we've got Dr. Sweatnam and Dr. Stubbs joining us again as our beauty experts. We're going to continue our conversation that we had from last month because we were talking about procedures for the face, and today we're going to be talking about the eyes. Mm -hmm. The yeah. eyes. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. <laughs> okay, so I was um, scrolling the website and just looking at um, what the uh, clinic offers as far as eyes. Couple questions. An eyelid surgery? What is that? Uh, several different eyelid surgeries, but the most common one is to lift the upper eyelids okay. so you with time you can get a little skin laxity that can hood or kind of make the eye look a little bit smaller okay and there are several different procedures that we can do to uh, tighten the upper eyelid skin versus remove the upper eyelid skin uh, and uh, it's a very easy procedure to do and it will have a very nice uh, outcome for them you, and as you can see in the example that you know it has almost a tired look and then after the procedure she looks refreshed young and still looks like her, right? So okay. it kind of brings back the clock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then um, an eyebrow eyebrow lift as well. Let's talk about that. Well, this, this kind of a, it's kind of one unit. So, uh, you know, you, you can have brow ptosis or droop, and you can have dermatochalasis or droop of the skin okay. above the lid. So it's kind of two, two different segments, but, you know, the eyes kind of, whenever you meet somebody, that's where you look. Sure. And, and so it's a way, really a, a quick way to rejuvenate. A lot of people are scared of a full lower face and neck lift, doing the whole face, but the eyes can really make a huge difference. So one of the things we, we do is try to differentiate if it's the lid or the brow okay. or potentially both things. And uh, we, can rate, we can elevate the brow using multiple different techniques depending on what you need. And we can also take off that excess skin. Yeah. Okay. Something I know that a lot of people have questions about is um, when they're thinking about just doing different procedures, how their insurance kind of comes into play and what their insurance will take care of. Can you kind of break that down for us? Well, this is one of the few procedures in, in our world that, that, you know, cosmetically, you can get a cosmetic result and actually insurance will pay for it. Okay. If you meet certain criteria. Okay. And uh, most of the time those criteria involve a visual field test. Uh, failing a visual field test, which means you have so much extra stuff here that you can't, can't you lose really peripheral see. vision and sure. things like that. So uh, what we do is in conjunction with your optometrist or ophthalmologist, we work together to try to meet those criteria. And if you do meet them, then they will, they will cover it. Okay, okay, good to know. What is the process? Um, how long does it take for the procedure and then the recovery period? What does that look like? Sure, if we're just doing upper eyelids, that can be done in the office or at the a surgery center if you so desire, but that's less than an hour. Oh, wow, okay. Well, less than an hour. And okay. then if we're doing a brow with it, you're probably about an hour and a half okay. procedure. Okay, okay. Any kind of recovery time? Should people you maybe take the day off the next day? Do you have to wear, yeah. like, special kind of glasses to kind of block any kind of sun? Yeah, good question. Foster grants. <laughs> Blue blockers <laughs> they, they from back in get, the day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it all depends. I mean, some people, you can go out the next day, your eyes a little bit blurry just because of the, um, the ointment they have on the incision lines, but... But uh, most people try to hide for about a week, give or take. You know, okay. Some people, too, depending on how much they care. Okay. So, so if someone's watching and they're like, yes, I want to learn more, how mm -hmm. can they contact you and reach out to you at the office? Well, it, it's, it's nice. If you, if you want your insurance to cover it, go online to your insurance company, look up the criteria. Okay. And that way you can kind of save a, save a trip. But uh, if you want to do it cosmetically, we just... Uh, get online and you know you can book an appointment online or call the office and uh, we can see you then and yeah. we're happy to assess making sure that's what we need because sometimes you need a brow sometimes you need a bleph sometimes you need both okay and it's just nice for us to, to do a nice exam on you and make sure that we're doing the right procedure because if you just do the upper eyelid procedure you're kind of hooked into it because We'll tell you about the risks of it, but if you're if you're only doing a blepharoplasty and you really need a brow lift, you're you're, you're kind of in trouble. You're mess yourself up. Mess yeah. yourself up. So, so definitely make sure there's a consultation that happens to know what is going to yeah. be best for Especially you. Especially if you think your brow's really really heavy. Yeah. So. I cheat. I use eyelashes to try to make myself look young, but I don't know how long that's going to oh. last. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you so yeah, much for joining us. Yeah. We'll check in with you all next month. Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. Thank you.